like to welcome all clubs, societies taking part in this year's Irish Photographic Federation National Shield Digital Competition 2020. It's been quite a difficult year for a lot of photographic clubs, societies, also the businesses that are in the photographic trade. COVID-19 has seen all our lives turned upside down. Early in the year, I was asked, what are you going to do about the shield? I said very quickly off the cuff that I was thinking of doing a digital competition. I brought this suggestion to council and they rolled in behind it. No competition runs without the help of the local club. In my case, I'm very privileged and honored to be a member of the Kilkenny Photographic Society. Last year, we had a large number of members uh, behind the scenes working away. This year, I'm bringing back a very small crew and from the Kenny Photograph Society, the members are Ned Mahan, Derva Conroy and Fiona Long. We also have a representative from the Carlo Photograph Society, Sabrina Dunny. Special thanks goes to Fiona for all the work she has done on the National Shield software, bringing it up to date. This year, 29 clubs are taking part, an increase on last year. Now, one man who has been with the National Shield longer than any one coordinator is Sheldon Law, Fine Art Papers. Sheldon has sponsored the National Shield over the last number of years. I now hand you over to the man himself to say a few words. Hi Andy, thanks for that nice introduction. Uh, it's great to be back with the IPF and uh, I'm delighted to see that the National Shield is going ahead, uh, even in these tough times. Um, I have to say, it's a shame we all can't meet up. I love the hotel venues. I love having my little table of wares and going through and explaining products to people and, uh, and looking at the wonderful prints that are normally on display. Uh, hopefully we can all get back next year. The, my business uh, has changed a lot over the year. We have a new website as part of that uh, and as part of our sponsorship with the National Shield, uh, of which we're delighted to be, of course. Um, we have a 10% discount for uh, clubs uh, that are members of the IPF and individuals, whoever wants to buy. If you use uh, the uh, code uh, SHIELD2020, you'll get 10% off at the checkout stage on our website, which is www.fineartpapers.ie. Now, over the years, a number of clubs have been using our papers and doing very well. One of the main papers that I, that I represent is Canson and Canson, a French company. This is one of their papers, Canson Prestige. A lot of clubs have used that, done very well with it. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about papers, but there is a new one that they brought out. And I'm delighted to say it's in stock and it's called Berita Photographique 2. Um, it's a slightly textured version of their previous Berita paper. Really nice paper, selling very well. Uh, again, you can buy it on our website. Not only Canson papers, also do the Hannah Miller papers. And uh, this one here is the new metallic rag paper. It's a very interesting paper if you've got scenes with reflections in it and stuff like that. Um, you know, water where you can see down through it uh, to the rocks and the pebbles below and things like that. Um, car chrome and stuff like that really really sparkles and it's a rag paper rag meaning it's it's made from cotton so uh, Hannah Muller there one of the ones we do certificates of authenticity this is something people not people aren't aware of but if you have a look on the Hannah Muller website it explains it all basically you have a holographic sticker you can apply to any images and uh, for limited edition prints a really good way of selling okay um, I was asked the logos behind me here, um, the black one in the middle there, the St. Cuthbert's one is a new paper for me as such. Uh, well, new, maybe in the last two, two years, maybe, but it's part of the uh, Canson group now. It's a, a UK company. A lot of people have heard of Somerset paper um, by, by uh, uh, St. Cuthbert's. And they also do a bucking for it, which is a really nice textured, relatively inexpensive paper. So again, all on our website. So without kind of boring people too much, I must say that we sell Epsom products, Epsom paper. This is one that Podge Kelly used. Uh, it's cotton textured, fine art, cotton textured, natural. 
he is in the Dublin Camera Club there for his exhibition. A lot of people were asking about it, and quite a few people have bought it. Again, available on the website, along with Epsom printers and, all, and BenQ monitors, um, Mirage software, a host of other products. Uh, have a look in our blog section as well. In there, I have a how to choose a paper section. A lot of people ask that question. Normally, when I'm face to face with people at the Shield, that's something I can show and say, look, this image works really well on this type of paper, or this one works very well on that. However, not being able to see people, uh, you'll have to just take my word for it. Have a look on the blog and uh, how to choose a paper. Some other bits and pieces in there. But listen, you didn't come here to see an advert for, for me, uh, my company, but uh, I'm gonna, without further ado, I'm gonna pass you back to Andy and uh, to the National Shield. And uh, hopefully all the clubs will be excited to see where they've come and everything else. So hopefully next year we'll see you all in person. Bye for now. I'd just like to say a few words and welcome our judges. Uh, we have a very privilege this year to have three judges, one from Australia, uh, one from Indonesia and one from England. Uh, our Australian judge, Bronwyn, started her interest in photography when her husband uh, got himself a camera. She joined the Suburban uh, Photographic Society in 1995 and in 2002 she joined the Digital Photographic Internet Club. In 2008, Bronwyn got her Masters uh, from the Australian Photographic Society. She's also, also a holder of a FEEP silver and uh, is a FEEP liaison officer for Australia. Uh, currently, she is the editor uh, of the FEEP newsletter. Our second judge, Agatha, uh, from Indonesia. Agatha is the founder and director of a non-profit organization, Art Photography of Indonesia that connects and collaborates uh, with all photographers around the world. She's a pioneer of international salons. She inspires and helps many Indonesian photographers to get distinctions. Agatha joined the Photograph Society of America in 2005 and has now earned the Fellow Honor, FPSA. She also has an ARPS and is currently an EFIB Platinum. Her current position uh, in the Photograph Society of America is International Relationship Vice President. Our third judge, uh, Richard from England. Richard is a member of the uh, Morton Photographic Society of Carlisle for over 35 years. Richard has a keen interest in nature and landscapes. Richard also represents the Northern Counties Photographic Federation on the Photographic Alliance of Great Britain. Bronwyn, if you would like to say a few words on that panel. Sure. I'd actually like to just briefly start by saying what an outstanding standard this has been in this competition. There's um, some truly amazing work amongst what we've got here this evening. And uh, I would fully expect a lot of images to uh, do well in international competition. Anyhow, to, to look at this panel, uh, the, the shot that I've chosen, we've been asked to talk about one image in particular from the panel. Um, the shot I chose is, is titled, um, uh, let me just make quite sure I've got the right one, is this Donny. And I thought there was a lot of wonderful elements in this image. There's a tremendous amount of detail and beautiful sense of perspective, especially as you converge those lines of those shelves going through to the man standing. Uh, whenever I look at an image, I always say, look, is there things that would make this even stronger for me? And in this instance, I would have loved the man to be perhaps uh, doing something other than standing there. Uh, I saw the potential for using that depth for him to be, re you know, standing perhaps on the ladder and reaching towards into the shelves, whereby he, the person himself would use that depth of the image as well. But other than that, the quality of this is excellent. Well done. I got to do. Um, this is a very nice panel with a different kinds of photos. You can see that uh, there's some landscape and then the street photos and then nature, indoor or even outdoor. I think uh, my favorite one is actually the photos titled Ghost Train because you can see that the, the, the ghost itself, I mean, like it's like abandoned train 
And uh, the things that are very interesting is actually the clouds. With the dark clouds, it makes the photo more dramatic. Uh, then uh, it's a very uh, powerful photos, uh, but then overall it's a very nice panel. Uh, Richard? Yes, I was interested particularly in this panel because there's some wonderful portraiture in it running right the way through from the children and the lovely dog. But the one that really drew my attention is the one entitled Fortitude, because I think you've captured a wonderful character here and just that focus on those liquid eyes and some very, very good control of lighting. You've cropped it very, very tightly, which to me, I think, works and having him offset to the right hand side of the picture space. Maybe not to everybody's cup of tea, but I think it really helped concentrate on this character. And I did as well appreciate that very, very gentle sepia toning, which I think I did a lot of character. Uh, another, yep. another lovely panel. Um, the image that I chose to hone in on was the one titled My Teddy, which is the little one up in the top left hand side. Technically excellent image. The child feels very natural, which is one of the things that appealed to me in this image. There's, there's no forced smile, which is so classic. I, I spent um, many years photographing children of preschool age, uh, probably around 10,000 children would be roughly the number of kids I've photographed. And one of the things I love about this was that, that she is so natural in her expression. There's been no attempt to make her hair fancy, to, to push her, to smile, to, do, to, to be anything other than her pure self. And that Teddy feels loved, you know, even, even though she's been placed in a studio setting, she still feels, she still feels very real and technically it's excellent. The, the eyes in particular are very engaging. Well done. I get it. This is, yes, uh, this is one of my favorite panel. Uh, the strong point of this panel is actually the portrait photos, uh, where you can see uh, most of the portrait photos here uh, is with the strong eyes. I think the eyes is looks like, it seems like, like uh, you are, they are talking to you or they are staring at you, which is, I think in the portrait photos, eyes is one of the important elements to make the photos become more powerful. And I think with the proper lighting as well, you can also make some catch of light in the eyes. So that's why uh, it's a very appealing uh, panels and uh, a very appealing portrait photo as well. And uh, overall, it's a very nice with a mix of uh, portfolio, like uh, the mix of collection, like some landscape, some birds, uh, and there's also a street photos. Uh, a job well done uh, to the club. Uh, Richard? Yeah, an another good variety of images in here, some quite experimental ones as well, with the one of the photographer almost ending up with double eyes to him in there. The one that I've chosen to comment on specifically is in the top left of the panel, Geris Guggenheim, an amazing building. And I think the author here has done a very good job of choosing such a dramatic viewpoint to bring out the incredible detail in the building. I think you've done a very good job in holding back a lot of the highlights on that metallic surface. And I think possibly you could just lift it a little bit because in some areas, we've got quite dark shadows heading into almost blocking up in the blacks. And I think a little bit of lifting of those could make this stand out even more strongly. Roman. Gorgeous set of images. Um, we've got uh, beautiful lighting on the, the little mushrooms down in the bottom. And I, I really appreciated the one over in the bottom right called Tom's, Tom's Room. But uh, the one in particular that uh, I, I chose to comment on is the one titled Pollution, which is the one in the top left. I would describe this as an absolutely haunting image. Uh, the treatment and presentation of the photo adds to that dark and ominous feel. Um, and much as that mask comes from the past, one can also perceive that sort of futuristic apocalyptic type scenario. 
And although the eyes are hard to see, you can tell that they're quite intense too when you look closely at the image. And certainly in the conversations when we were looking at these images as a group, there was the, even the relation to, I guess, the current predicament where we are indeed a lot, many of us wearing masks and where we are facing a, a, a world a world changing event for, for this year at least. Um, but yes, excellent image, well done. I get it. Yeah, again, this is one of my favorite panel as well. And particular, I uh, especially the photo title, Hello. So you can see that the Hello is it, it's kind of very nice, soft lighting. And the expression of the model also is very soft. I, I like it so much. Uh, and uh, again, uh, there is a mood in this in these photos as well. Another thing that makes me interesting is actually uh, interested is actually the photo title T42. Okay, this this is a lot of story behind. I think there is a lot of story in this in these photos, uh, especially the man. It looks similar. Simil a lot of similarity, like the coat, uh, and then like the gesture, even the gesture of the hands is almost the same. And then they are trying to hold the tea as well. And the environment is also, uh, the environment is also, uh, uh, it's very appealing. So this is a very nice story photos uh, and a very nice panel also. Job well done. Uh, Agda? Oh, sorry, uh, uh, no, it's, sorry, sorry, it's sorry, on this one again. Um, another huge variety in this, and congratulations to the club for choosing such a variety. Um, the one I'm going to comment on specifically is, is the wood turner, and I think compositionally, this is very strong indeed. The tight crop that you've chosen really does help us to concentrate on the wood turner's skill with the chisel on the lathe. Um, you've got good sharpness throughout this picture. And I think you've handled what were probably very difficult lighting conditions in there very well indeed. You've got no blocked up shadows, no burning highlights. And uh, yeah, job well done with this one. Uh, Bronwyn. One would always expect, anyone who knows me, would be that they would expect me to talk about the Border Collie because I'm a Border Collie breeder. <laughs> And indeed, delightful dog, and I've had them for 40 years. Um, some beautiful range of images, and that's not the actual one I'm going to comment on. The one I particularly wish to talk about is the one titled Dara and Me. And I'm, I, please forgive me if I've pronounced that incorrectly. It's the, the, the photo of the child with the, the dog down in the bottom left corner of the panel. And it, there's very clearly a bond between that dog and that young man, much as you can ask a child to, to do certain things for you for the camera, that dog has responded naturally. And there's clearly a relationship between the two, the child coming home from school, there's a story that goes with that image. The expectation that that dog is probably waiting at that window each day as that child arrives home from school. I thought that was a, just a really lovely natural type of capture and something that so many of us can relate to that own a dog. Well done. Thank you. This is again a very interesting panel and a mix of variety. Um, I'm particular actually there is two photos that uh, I attracted to, uh, which is the first one, which is a shadow. The one that it attracts me more is actually the dog. The dog, because I think you have to wait until the dog is actually open his mouth, which is, is probably sometimes it's not easy. You have to be patient. And it's the, also the, 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 the dog is looking at the, uh, the one that's taking picture, which is very nice. I think it's a very nice and very interesting. The other one is actually uh, the man, uh, the man, which is, okay, the photo which uh, called uh, title uh, relaxing. I think is uh, I think uh, having break, not relaxing, having break. Uh, oh. 
So I think this is a very nice black and white as well. And you can feel that this man is uh, in the in the in the spare time probably or uh, during uh, during the the day uh, when he can just relax and then he's smoking. So you can feel a sense of relaxing of this man. And but overall, it's very nice variety and very nice interesting panel. Now, uh, Richard. Yes, some clever work in this one, some very good close-up of musical instruments in it. Um, the one that I have chosen to speak about is the tackle, which is in the top row, third one in from the left. And I thought that was a wonderful tight group in there. You've caught the action magnificently and the, the strong lighting has worked very well indeed. And none of the crowd in the background, none of their uh, shadows or highlights are interfering with the strength of that action and monochrome suits this so well I don't think if it was recorded in color it would be half as strong in this picture so yeah a great action superbly called and um, Bronwyn particularly strong panel of work and congratulations to the club. Um, I had a hard time deciding which images I would, which image I was actually going to comment on and would actually mention particularly two of them. Um, the portrait down on the bottom left, which is titled Abbey and the one titled Stripes, which is the third from the, third from the left on the bottom. Um, Abbey, is, it's a very brave thing to put a set of stripes with a set of um, patent circles on a dress and expect the portrait of the face to stand out. And yet this one absolutely works. And such attitude on that facial expression and the eyes that have just been illuminated so beautifully. It's why this face stands out so strongly and the whole image, the way, she, the way she's presented against that wall with that very individual set of attire, it really exudes personality. And that's what makes the difference between a portrait and a, a photograph of a person in a, in a studio? Is it just a record of what they look like? Or is it something that tells you something about that person? And this one tells you about this person's personality in so many ways. Um, the other one is an absolute standout image titled Stripes. Um, I, all I could think of was it, it actually looks like a creature, you know, that it's not just a person, you know, that those stripes, the legs exuding from the body, which is actually the hat, is just such a creative portrait. I would expect that to absolutely do well at international level. And if you haven't entered it already, you should. Well done. Agatha. Yeah, uh, another interesting panels. Uh, is a mix of variety, is a mix of uh, uh, some landscape, uh, also some of the animals. Uh, the one that uh, uh, the one that I want to comment is actually the photo called the mighty a mighty catch. I think um, uh, also I mean like supported with the the the, the title itself. This is a very nice uh, and good uh, sport photo where you can you where you capture everything at the peak so basically you can see that the hands is at the peak the jump is at the peak and you can see also the expression of the 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 players there uh, seems to be like okay they are want to uh, win the game so this is a very nice and a very powerful sport photos and you capture it in the right moment in the great moment so job well done uh, and then for the interesting panels, the one is actually another one I want to comment is actually uh, the photos with the, the grassland and with the small horse. And I kind of like this one um, because even though it is a small, uh, this just a small element of the horse, but it's very nice, especially when you make it a big print, I think it will be quite very nice and powerful. And Richard. A fascinating panel. I commend the people who put this one together that we've got that seed head in the top um, top line adjacent to that woman's 
portrait with that wonderful hat, which almost replicates the seed head in the picture next to it. And I thought that was an interesting little balance, perhaps unintentional, but it did work. The one that I've chosen to comment on, though, is down on the bottom row, um, third one in from the left, which is called The Love of Books. And I thought it's it is a sort of image that we've seen taken in many different ways before, but your intention of the lighting here, the concentration on that heart shape, and I particularly enjoyed the way that the, the bookmark tassel running out from the book down towards the bottom right hand of the image does strengthen it considerably. So I think the way in which you've handled the lighting, worked on the idea, and in particular, the title to run with it has lifted this beyond just a copy of what other people have done before. You've put your own personal stamp on this. And we're back to Bronwyn. Really broad range of images. Uh, a couple of people have um, focused very heavily on patterns, so that being the one with the curves over on the far right, top right, uh, with all the various curves throughout the building and indeed the curves of the tables down in the um, forecourt there. And uh, the other one, I, one of the other ones I really liked in this set was the, the set of archways over on the far left and those converging lines and the converging spheres. There's sort of three, three themes of shapes going through that image and the absolute depth of um, images. I actually thought what would be an interesting thing to experiment as a different image would be to actually grab a, a person and put them just out of the line of sight and have their shadow encroach on one of those archways, just as an idea for something that you might want to go back and do with that setting. But the image that I thought was the absolute standout in this panel is the one titled Lonesome Cow. It's a little bit like the one that Agatha mentioned in the previous one with the horse up on the grasslands. It's a, it's a cow and it's the tiniest element, but it's just so important in this image. The image is so atmospheric, you know, that, that sea spray that's just surrounding those, those that landscape and the, 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 the actual coastline that's, uh, that spray has actually segregated we in in such a beautiful layered way it gives such beautiful depth and such detail in the image but that uh, how you manage to plan for that cow to be just there at the right time in the right spot for you it's uh, you were so lucky <laughs> well done and we're back now to uh, Agatha I love this panel, actually. I love this panel. And uh, there is two photos is my favorite one. The first one is actually the dog. Um, if you see the dog really carefully, uh, I like the movement of the dog. And you can sense the, the, the movement of this dog because you can see the hair of the dog is like uh, flying. And you can see also the hands, the, yes, the hands, the feet. Oh, not the hands, the feet of the dog. Okay. So you can sense of action in these photos, uh, which is, is a very nice, a nice one, uh, instead of just posing. So this is a very, uh, very my favorite one, uh, the dog. And the second one is actually uh, a photo called Gemma. Uh, very nice. This is one of the perfect photo, I think, uh, from the lighting side, and then especially the eyes, uh, the lighting on the eyes. And then the expression of the girl is very soft, it's very, it's very natural uh, and it's very like, okay, the girl is actually like very pure and it seems to be like a, a princess from the old days. And especially it's the more that make it dramatic, actually the clothes itself, the gown, uh, which is a very unique one. So overall I have nothing, I mean, there is nothing uh, weakness of this, this photo. I think, it, uh, I think uh, you have to be proud of yourself when the photographers that took this kind of picture. Uh, but the overall panel, again, a very interesting for me and uh, a lovely panel. Good job. And Richard? Yes, again, another very strong panel, some different character and emotion in here. And I did enjoy two pictures specifically in this one. And the first one was up on the top right and that lovely exploration down that avenue of old trees, I thought was particularly strong the way you've handled that. But the one I really do want to comment on is this, this one up on the top row, second in from the right, called Ran Out of Charge 
why the razor has died partway through this operation and it's just got that wonderful expression and uh, you've got half a hairy head and then the, the bit that's freshly shaved, very cleverly done. I did like the way you've handled the lighting so well, so there's quite a strength of light coming in from the background to make the hairs on the hairy side of the head still stand out quite well. I'm not quite sure whether his eyes are naturally that big. They did look a little bit unnatural to me, so I don't know whether you've used the liquify tool on them to strengthen their shape, but they did look as if he's perhaps got a thyroid problem. But nonetheless, I thought it was an extremely well put together picture and I enjoyed it. And uh, Bronwyn? This is a, an excellent panel. There's a, a lot of very interesting and diverse set of images in this, uh, in this set, but there's two in particular that I've chosen to comment on uh, much as I'm only meant to comment on about one, there's, there's two that I felt strongly needed to be commented on. One of them is the one titled Foreboding Tower, uh, which is the one second in from the left on the bottom row. And it's an image that I think a lot of people could uh, actually look past, but it's actually um, quite a, a, an incredible image. It's, I presume it has been taken at night and it's been seen and rendered with a very artistic eye. It's, it's almost abstract in the way it's been portrayed, um, both in terms of its lighting and its form. It's got excellent perspective throughout the height of the, the tower. And you've got this series of shapes. You've got that, that conical shape of the tower that's uh, got that strong sense of perspective in it. You've got the shaping of the bricks. You've got those almost elliptoid shape associated with the clouds as the clouds are passing through on that slow shutter speed. Uh, and it absolutely screams to be a monochrome as you have presented it. If you'd presented this in colour, it just it just wouldn't wouldn't have the same effect because this is so much about the shapes that are there and colour would literally be a distraction. Uh, the other one that is an obvious little standout is the one that's titled Chinese Lantern, third from the left on the top row. And it's just a beautiful, simple, still life. It's been excellently executed. Uh, the lighting on the seed pod um, is excellent and it has that beautiful 3D quality and the depth of field has been perfectly chosen, of course, to, to te be technically right. The um, reflection adds significantly to this image. It's just a very simple and very beautiful still life. Well done. Okay. Uh, the next uh, panel is actually for Richard. Richard. thrown me out of line slightly on that. Um, Sorry, <laughs> it's just, uh, just we, we are missing one panel. Uh, that's right, that's it. Um, yes, some good variety in this picture. I've I found overall though that perhaps the image quality throughout this uh, panel wasn't quite as strong as in some of the others. Um, one or two little hiccups and problems of sharpness and lighting um, throughout, which did let them down because this, the potential of some of the pictures here is very strong, but the quality wasn't quite as good as in some of the others. Um, the one I'm going to comment on specifically is in the bottom left, Paris. Um, yes, you've certainly caught the atmosphere very well there, but I do wonder if nobody was bothering you, if you'd stayed there just for a little bit longer to see if there would be more interesting characters on the street walking towards you. And perhaps, you never know, those grumpy people at that table in the, the, the foremost table in the front of the Paris cafe, they might have smiled at some stage during the proceedings, but they certainly didn't look as cheerful to be in Paris at all. But it's certainly one rendered in mono says much more than if it had been in colour. And we're back now to Bronwyn. Yeah, the one that uh, this is again a lot of um, variety within this scene. Uh, that beautiful little minimalist shot that's down in the bottom left with the tiny little figure at the end of the pier is gorgeous, and uh, the I love the movement on the uh, the top the top right, and of course the the game of hurling. And I had to look that up. I thought this is Ireland. It'll be a Gaelic sport because we barely see this sport in Australia, and we do indeed have it. We've got a lot of Irish people living here in Australia, but uh, looked it up and, and quickly watched a video of hurling because I thought, this is fascinating. How does this operate with this, this ball and this bat? 
uh, but delightfully well captured uh, right at that, the peak of the movement. And, but the one that I particularly like is the one that's titled Crisp Morning, which is the bottom right-hand corner. Um, it's an excellent composition and it's the converging lines of those branches that just lead you into that picture right through to that, that central monument, um, that, that convergence of lines and then that three-dimensional aspect which has been brought out so well with the lighting, the time of day that you've chosen so that you've got that lighting on the base of, the, of that, um, the, that monument that you can see that it has a three-dimensional component to it. And 3D in an image is just so important in a two-dimensional art form. Uh, the thing that absolutely nails this image is that tiny little figure down on the down in the foreground, uh, which gives it a, a total sense of scale. And you just realise just how big that monument is when you've got that one little silhouette of a figure. Such a small element in the picture, but so important. Great image. Well done. And we now return to Agatha. Uh, this is a very nice uh, panel, a mix of variety of panels. The one that uh, I want to uh, comment is actually the photo with the title, Where is my fit? Very interesting. I think it is very interesting photos for me. Uh, and a nice gesture, of, nice gesture of the man. I think you can see that the man is actually looking up and with uh, the composition, very nice composition, where the man is actually in the middle of the fit. Uh, the more the things that I can probably uh, it can be probably improved if the lighting is more dramatic. If the lighting is probably more because this is a little bit flat lighting, uh, but if the lighting is actually is the lighting uh, more uh, striking, probably this photo it will be become more powerful. And if this photo is actually a candid photo, I think uh, this is a very nice where you have really have to wait and you have to be lucky this to capture this man until the, the man have a nice uh looking up to the to the feet so uh uh, uh very nice again composition and uh, uh, photos and i think for the panel itself uh is it's a good uh, mix of variety uh, from the landscape from the street and then from uh there is some also uh, night shot uh, which is a good one as well, very interesting. Um, so, very good, lovely panel, good job. Now we have, uh, we're now back to Richard. Yes, another fascinating panel, a load of different information in this one as well. Quite a few sort of, um, if you want, almost street photography across the top line there, some great ideas, well captured thoughts gone into that. Uh, the one up, well, there's a couple I did enjoy. I love the one of the little cat there where it says no cat flap, and I thought that was cleverly put together. But the one which did impress was the breakfast, which is bottom row, third one in, that young lad frantically swatting up before heading back to school. And I think we've all been in that situation. Um, and it's just ignoring the photographer completely. But I love the breakfast setup that you've arranged there with a the teapot, milk jug. Everything's in the right place. That The roughly hewn loaf of bread, I thought, worked spe specifically very well indeed. You've handled the lighting excellently. Uh, great depth of field. And uh, it comes across very strongly. Good emotional impact to that picture. Oh, Bronwyn, we're back to yourself. Some, again, a broad range of um, concepts and ideas. Uh, anything from the, the pattern of the, uh, the tire tread on the sand through to a, a, a boy in what would be described as um, dreadful conditions uh, down in the bottom right. The, the one that I've chosen to comment on is actually the one up in the top left-hand corner that's titled um, After Lockdown. Um, and it's presumably the um, resumption of activity within a, a city. Um, you've got the, the flurry of um, activity in the background where you've chosen to shoot at a shutter speed where the, the that you've been able to get a sense of movement with the tram, but you've also got that sense of movement of people rushing around, you know, with their shopping, the, the things that they haven't been able to do during lockdown. They're all carrying, every single one of them is carrying a shopping bag, and that's just so important. 
I was even, it's a little bit hard to tell, but I'm pretty sure even in the window of the tram, you can see people wearing masks. Um, I was intrigued a little bit with the patterning on the tram and I wasn't quite sure what to make of it, um, whether we were looking at, some of it looked like damage on the bottom of the tram and some of it looked like a series of cracks and possibly reflections. Maybe it was a pattern that was put on the tram. Uh, it may have even been something that you've super chosen to superimpose on the tram. And if that is what you've done, it's been a, an interesting idea. And uh, the way I interpreted that was somehow society's been fractured. Um, that we've got a, um, a society that's um, significantly impacted and this is society trying to resume and we've got this, this tram that's got these, this patterning of cracks all across it. But, uh, interesting, interesting choice. And Agatha. Yeah, um, I really like this panel. Uh, this is one of the powerful panel as well. Uh, the one that I uh, want to comment is actually the photo with the title Dark Morning. I feel, I feel some mood. Okay, I feel mood in these photos, emotionally mood. Because when you see this photo, you can see that a lot of layers of the trees and you can feel that like a hallway. You feel that you are like uh, uh, walking through the, this hallway in, uh, in, 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 in the middle of the jungle. So there is a mysterious feeling of these photos. And I think one of the successful photos is if you can make a connection between the photos and the audience. And this is what, what it's all about because I feel some connection to this photo. I feel that, okay, you bring me to the hallway where, okay, there's some mysterious will be happening at the end of the hallway. So I think uh, very nice. I like it very much. And um, in terms of the total uh, panels, it's uh, one of the strongest panels as well, uh, with a lot of uh, very interesting photos. And Richard. As Agatha said, there are some very, very strong panels, and this one I enjoyed as well. Uh, predominantly portraits, and they're all individual and a lot of thought gone into them. The one that I do want to concentrate on, though, is up in the top row, a second one in, entitled Memories. And picking up on Agatha's point that you need some emotion in pictures, this one certainly captured a huge amount of emotion. And there's a lot of thought I've gone into producing this composite where you have the, presumably, the survivor lady, maybe with photographs of those who didn't survive, against the strength of that barbed wire fence in the concentration camp. Compositionally, I think you've handled this extremely well. And the various opacities that you've used on the layers have been brilliantly put together. So they're not competing with each other. They're actually adding to the way in which the story creates an emotional impact on your audience. Very, very strong indeed. Excellent picture. And Brahman. Several very good images in this set also. And there's two that particularly stood out to me, that being the one in the top left-hand corner titled um, Kilalo, I assume that's how it's pronounced. And, and third from the, um, the left is uh, the top left and third from the left in the top row also titled Tattoo. Um, both of these images were standouts to me within this um, within this panel. The, um, the the one on the top left is gorgeous monochrome. It's just technically perfect. Um, beautiful, beautiful tonal range, and the, those wonderful clouds that you've managed to capture that have reflected in the water. And you've got that that town that's actually been framed. It is literally framed by those clouds, and and the and the the foreground branches and you've got a beautiful depth that's actually kept all of that in focus which is just such a, a perfect thing to do. Um, the, the Even just a, a little touch of vignetting that's gone around the edges, now that may have been the result of your wide angle lens because a number of wide angle lenses will do that but if you've added that that's it's I think that was a good choice regardless. And as for the tattooed guy, um, very grungy portrait you know, 
there's a real attitude with that that individual. I love that you've it has not been shot in a studio. It's been shot against that that dilapidated wall, and that's just just so fitting with the the personality that you've chosen to present on this person, and and indeed that amazing amount of artwork on his body. Um, high, the fact that it's been shot as a very high contrast, contrast image. I'm not even bothered about the fact that it doesn't have light in the eyes or anything like that. It feels right the way it is. Um, very important to have that intensity of expression within this particular image. I think it works very well. And uh, we're now back to Agatha. Yes. Um, very interesting panels as well and uh, a lot of variety as well, uh, a broad range of uh, photos. You can see some architecture, you can see some still life, and you can see some uh, human interest as well. The one that actually attract me more, or the, the, the attracted more, actually the macro photo, the WAPS, the title is actually the WAPS. We use actually to see a lot of macro photo in, in colors. So surprisingly, by having this photo turn out into the black and white, black and white, it become even more powerful. The thing is actually more uh, striking on these photos. Not only the sharpness, I can see the sharpness of this photo in the in the, in the eyes of the wops, and also the gesture. Okay, it's kind of like a funny gesture if you can see, uh, the, like uh, some movement. So. I guess when you take a picture of the animals, is not as easy. It's not okay. Taking picture of the animals is is not as easy. Like okay, probably like still life, because in animals there are some get there is some movement, and the animals you cannot also ask the animals to pose. Okay, so you have to wait and you have to be patient until they give you the right. Uh, uh, pose and in the right pose and like like this the pose is I think is very uh, very very nice uh, so that's why this photo is, uh, uh, is is a good and one of the example of the strong macro uh, photo in monochrome uh, again uh, in terms of the panels uh, uh, I think uh, it's, it's a very interesting one very broad one and they have a, a, a variety uh, of uh, interesting photos. Uh, job well done for the club. Uh, Richard? Yes, and we're finishing up on this one with a Thenry Abbey is the one I'm going to concentrate on. But again, some wonderful variety in the overall picture grouping here. Um, we're drawn to the one of the, the the tree roots and this wonderful guys down in the bottom right hand side with their dog. But the strength for me rests with uh, Athenry Abbey. And I admire photographers who go out in less than ideal conditions and manage to, under those challenging lighting conditions, manage to, manage to produce such a powerful picture, including all the damp dandelion seed heads in the foreground, I think is an inspired touch. And they gently lead through into the mist and the ruins of the abbey in the background. Great depth of field. I think you've chosen your apertures specifically very well indeed to create depth in this picture. And uh, like that lead through the gravestones, taking us to the abbey, which is beautifully situated in the top third of the picture space. Very well seen and produced and an attractive and interesting panel overall. Uh, Bronman. Super strong panel, this one. Lots of images I could comment on. Uh, a quick little bit of feedback on the one on the, the right, um, because I, at the top right, because I, I did particularly like this child. Just if you get a chance to just rework this image, can I suggest that you just um, remove the, uh, that, some, that background distraction colour, because I think this image is going to do very well for you if you do. Um, but the two images that I particularly honed in on were the two in the centre, the centre top. So the one 
second from the left and the one third from the left. So the one second from the left is titled Colourful Circles and it has to be one of the most beautiful abstract images I've seen. Um, excellent creativity, the beautiful use of colour and light. Um, true, I, I just looked at this and I said this is an absolute work of art and it's one of the things I love to see when I, when I judge for any club or, or indeed any competition is I love to feel that there's been an artist behind the camera and this is absolutely the case with this image. Uh, it almost to me looked like alien planets when you sort of stand back and look at it. You could almost visualise that alien world. Um, the other one was the post office, beautiful range of colour tonings, uh, the, the pinks that travel through the image, the, the jacket on the chair, which you have appropriately covered in dirt and dust to make sure that it fits with the scene. Uh, the pinks also flow through into the flowers that are in the picture in the frame on the on the mantelpiece and indeed even the pink toning in, in the floor. Um, the well-loved fireplace, the, the sense of warmth that this place was a well-loved home. Uh, it's just got a really nice mood about it. Great, great set of images. Well done. No, I got a... Uh, this panel is actually quite interesting with a broad range of variety uh, of the photos. Uh, however, uh, I just want to uh, uh, make some points. When you submit in the photos into the competition, we need to be careful of the quality of the photos. Some of the photos I see that are very, have a very good composition, uh, have uh, also captured at the right moment, but it needs to be improved in terms of the quality. For example, uh, the photos uh, the photos on the third photo in the first row, the photo with the rainbow, is actually a nice photo. I mean, like, you, you, you cannot see rainbows every day, so you capture it in the uh, right moment. But when you take a look, when you try to enlarge the photos, the photo is actually not really focused, not really sharp. And then in the landscape photo, uh, you need to be at, you need to be sharp. And the other things that I want to comment is actually the night shot. Uh, you can see some architecture, the city shots. Uh, again, it's actually a very nice composition, no doubt about it. But when I try to enlarge these photos, there is some. Uh, it's, seems to be some shake. I mean, is this a, this is a, a, a probably camera shake because it seems that probably when the photographer take a picture uh, without any tripod and we know that when you take a picture of the night shot, it is a tripod because of the slow speed. So that kind of things that uh, we need to be careful, especially when submitting uh, photos in the competition because uh, there are a lot of, uh, uh, it has, uh, because that the quality of the photo itself, it become very important. Uh, but again, I'm, 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 um, uh, but again, this panel is actually show that all of you have a very artistic taste uh, in terms of, uh, in terms of the composition. Uh, very nice, uh, all the photos, but just need to be careful on the technical part. Uh, Richard. Sorry, Richard, uh, just your microphone, please. Right. I was muting my microphone just in case the phone rang, which is just as well, because it did ring during that session. So switching it back on does help. Thank you for pointing that one out, Andrew. Okay. Um, yeah, a great variety in this panel. You're looking at some clever photographic work in here. and. Up on the top left of this panel, I did enjoy that rather large pig just gently shuffling out of the picture space. I thought that was very cleverly seen. And then the impact on the, the quality that's been produced by just studying that snail shell, I thought was very interesting. But the one which I'm going to comment on, because it picks up a couple of the points which Agatha identified in her comments on that last panel, that if you're taking landscapes, you really do need to have sharpness and quality to them, which is exactly what there is in the bottom row here. A couple of good landscapes, but it's the third one in, which is the Bow Lake Sunrise, that I think captures all clever landscape techniques. Beautiful light, very well handled, a great foreground with tremendous strength to it that takes you those two rocks, 
point you to the summit of the hill reflection in the background and you travel across that perfectly flat water to the rock faces beyond. Very capable, a lot of thought gone into the composition, tremendous depth of field, everything about it says good quality landscape photography. Uh, Bronwyn? Another panel with a lot of very strong images. Um, the, the one on the top left has got that gorgeous little image inside the, the ball that's held in the uh, girl's hand, which is lovely to see if you've actually blown it up. Uh, the two that I particularly want to hone in on, and one of them I will hone in very briefly on, is one, the, the little boy up on the top right-hand side, titled Boxer in Red. And there is actually a, a child, a similar child in the monochrome section, but the one, the thing that makes this one so much stronger is the attitude, the expression on the child. You've captured a little bit more, there's the body, the whole body posture of the child, that look in the eyes, that sense of determination. Uh, it's very, very important to, to capture that personality in the image, that picture beyond just what they physically look like. Uh, but the, the one that I want to really hone in on is the one called Duality of Lockdown. And that's the one on the bottom, uh, the third from the left. Um, a very clever, clever way this has been put together. And I guess here in Melbourne, I was saying to uh, the group running this competition be just before we started this, uh, that we've uh, emerged in Melbourne from a very similar lockdown to one that you've gone into in, uh, in Ireland and I believe there's actually been a lot of communication between our Chief Medical Officer and yours in Ireland in relation to what we did and if it's any inspiration and sense of hope for you guys we've now gone a fortnight without a single new case in Melbourne having been locked down for 15 weeks but we're now out the other side of that and we've got the ability to keep our lid on it we hope. Uh, but the duality of lockdown um, it, very, very interesting that 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 contrasting the contrast of the the colour, um, that sense of hope on one side, the sense of depression on the other, and that uh, the two colours that have been um, brought together to show that contrast, and indeed the the posture and the expression that goes with that. I just felt that this was um, particularly particularly well put together. Well done. And uh, Magda? Very interesting panels uh, with a lot of clarity as well. But the minute I saw this panel, I was attracted by the photo of the red umbrella. Is it at the, the last photo in the first row? The red umbrella and with a very interesting gesture of the feet of the women. So this is, I think, uh, for me, is a very nice idea to have this kind of setting, very fun uh, and then very attractive. The title of this photo is actually Alone in the Storm. Very interesting, indeed it's very interesting uh, title. But if I can suggest, I think if I, if I want to title these photos, I would say that I'm going to say that this, the title is hidden. Why? Because you keep just you, you keep wondering what is actually behind the red umbrella. This kind of mysterious and fun about this photo. That okay, you, you can you can imagine, okay, what is actually inside? Okay, what is actually behind the red umbrella? It can be is it is it what? I mean, like is it is it a blonde hair uh woman or is it a dark brown woman? Okay, there are a lot of things though. Uh, uh, if I can suggest that the title will be like uh, the more like the more mysterious things, um, uh, but the overall is a uh, nice uh, panels and also especially the glass, the glass with the the the, the with the nice color, uh, yellow and blue, uh, is a very creative uh, uh, photos and I think uh, it's a good also one of the good still photo. Now, Richard. Yes, um, uh, throughout this whole competition, I've been impressed very much with the variety of subject matter that clubs have been able to pull together. Some very skilled photographers out there. And when you look at a panel like this, you're going right the way through still life, natural history, portraiture, seascapes, uh, landscapes. It's very, very 
good group. The one that I want to concentrate on though is down in the bottom left hand, which is the fishing hut. Um, and again, it's, uh, I'm always impressed by those photographers who bother to take pictures in what you would call adverse conditions. There's no specific light coming into this. It, you're just looking at very gray, misty conditions and your long exposure here has helped to blur the water. But it's also, to my mind, added a great deal of interest by those two little boats over on the left hand side, gently moving up and down as the water does. And that added little interest, I think, just lifts the pictures. I did wonder initially whether taking a little bit off the sky or a little bit off the water might have strengthened the attention on the fishing hut, but I think it carries itself off in exactly the way you've cropped it there. So just leave it well alone. It's a lovely image. Um, Bronham. Beautiful work in this in this panel, um, and I could indeed have picked you know more than half of them to comment on. Uh, there's a two that one I'll comment on briefly, and that's the the one in the bottom left hand corner that's titled "Lonely Goldie," because um, it's just such a stunning image, and in fact it was the image that I gave the highest score to out of this panel. I it's got such beautiful lighting, beautiful 3D, that quality going through that hallway in terms of the light shafting across that hall. Uh, there's one thing I felt that would have taken this another point higher. And if you've got access to this location, I think it's well worth your while returning. And that's the teddy bear. Loved the teddy bear, but the teddy bear needed to be not a new teddy bear. Uh, if you've got access to opportunity shops, what we call opportunity shops, which are those charity shops where you might be able to pick up a, a well-worn, well-loved, partially falling apart teddy bear and pop it in that spot, I think you will have yourself an, just that notch higher on what is already a very good image. Um, the one that I particularly wanted to focus on is called the new normal. And that's the one second from the left up on the top row. And it's really quite a clever compilation of um, faces, particularly when you talk about the, the positioning of the lines going through the face. And I saw that as the sharp dividing line uh, as being the, the separating of the young from the old, indeed, when we are protecting people within this COVID environment. And the mask on the young and that look of determination on that young person who you could say was determined to protect the people on the other side of that dividing line. And even the fact that there's a man in the, on the left-hand side, it's a man up the top and a woman down the bottom, the separation of people, um, people being put in hospital, people who um, are being kept apart. And I saw that as part of it. And then just in terms of the way you've unified it, the use of the hood and the woman's necklace, when you follow that line, it actually unites going, going around through the picture. It unites those two sides of the picture even though that dividing line is there. I just thought that was very symbolic. Well done. Now, we're back to Agatha. Sorry, Agatha, you've got your microphone. Yep. Yeah, okay. uh, this is also my one of my favorite panel, uh, a very interesting panel because most of the panel have a dreamy effect have a painting effect. The one that I want to comment is actually uh, the photo of the sunflower. You can see that uh, in the second row uh, on the right uh, corner, uh, on the, sorry, on the left corner uh, of the second photo, uh, the sunflower. Uh, it's a simple one, but uh, when you enlarge this, I can see that this is a very soft lighting and also uh, have a painting effect again. Uh, and uh, this is uh, have an unusual angle in the sense of when you take a picture of the sunflower, people usually take a picture in front, in front of the sunflower, but this is from the side. So everything is very soft. Then I can imagine this kind of type of photo is hanging on the wall in a very nice gallery. Uh, uh, I think it's kind of uh, art, one of the art photos uh, that everybody can enjoy. 
uh, nice panel again and uh, good job to the club. Uh, Richard? Yes, lovely variety too in this one, running through some creative uh, floral studies and some interesting portraiture, including the lovely portrait of the monkey, is it staring at its own reflection, which is quite fascinating. Um, the lady up in the top left corner, it almost looks like a stage set, something that you'd expect to find on an amateur dramatic stage, so some good lighting in there. The one that did hit me very strongly though was this group down in the bottom row, second one in from the left hand side, which is just called Friends for Life. It's been very well posed and lit. I love the fact that they've all got the baseball caps on backwards. They've a very intimate pose, three characters there. And I think in the way that you've got this arranged, you've actually captured the characters of the girls, where the strong diagonal lead running through the picture space, great expressions, and it's the sort of picture that all three of them, I'm sure, will look back on with great pleasure in future. Lovely bit of work. Now oh, back to Bronwyn. Again, some beautiful work amongst these um, this set of images. Uh, there's the one that I'm going to focus on is actually the first in the top left, which is titled "Remembering the Days Gone By." And uh, it's got really beautiful lighting on this portrait and great depths of field to make sure that you've got those hands with the pipe in focus as well as the eye. As much as your face, your, your eye is drawn to the face, it's so important because that, that pipe in his hands is so much a part of the, the character that you've captured. Um, this one to me screamed to be in an environmental portrait. Um, because there's so much character about this person. I'm not quite sure what he's actually balancing on, uh, it, whether it's a, a type of bench or maybe even part of a suitcase. Uh, it, it struck me that you could probably actually crop that bottom off and that it would possibly make this image a little bit stronger because that bottom really isn't actually helping you with anything. But if you were to then take this same character and place him in a, in, a, in a bar or in a setting, in a chair near a window somewhere, it, uh, I think it would even be much, it would be, it felt like an environmental, import, environmental portrait without the environment. And that that would actually take this a notch higher, much as I think what you've done here is very good. And just a little comment on the, the dog on the couch. And yes, we've reupholstered one of our couches too, thanks to one of our dogs doing similar to what's happened to this particular chair. Uh, just on the on the muzzle, this dog's obviously been brought in with a halty around his uh, to hold on, you know, lead him on the muzzle. And just before you photograph him, if you do this again, just give his muzzle a bit of a rub so that you haven't got the mark of the the strap across his muzzle. That was the only thing, because other than that, it's a perfect portrait of the dog. Well done. And uh, Agatha. Yeah, this is a very lovely. Uh, panels, uh, uh, a lot of uh, variety, uh, and a lot of uh, a lot of variety in the sense of they have some still life, they have some uh, sport and street photography, and some humans. The one that there is two photos that I want to command is the first one is actually the first image, the first image uh, on the first row. Uh, I think the title is decisive moment. This is a very creative idea. And I think the, the one that uh, a, a more interesting is actually the, the movement. I mean, the movement of the toys itself. It's not easy. I think it's not easy to make this kind of, I mean, like you have to set it really, light, really right in the right position. And I can see that the photographer actually really try hard to make the movement like a decisive moment. So that is actually a very good one. If I have to, if there is something to improve, it probably the lighting because the lighting probably a little bit flat. You can enhance it a bit to make the photo, the message of the photo of the decisive moment is more impacted. The second one of the photos I would like to comment is actually uh, the the second photo of the first row. 
again, I like the dreamy effect of the photos. It's like okay, you are in the you are in the different you are in the different uh, environment, and this is what I feel when I took uh, when I see uh, these photos, uh, and then uh, especially underneath is the red. So there is some contrast between the white one, the color of the white one, the mist of the the mist environment of the trees, and also um, I think because of the 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 colors of the the colors of the ground, which is the red one. So it's a very nice combination, and it's a very nice composition. Okay. Uh, Richard? Yes, thank you. Yes, one or two pictures here deserve a, a comment. Um, there's a couple of little technical issues with uh, a couple on the top row, where we're, we're looking at the big cat here, up on the top left, I just wonder whether it would have been possible to gently fade that background back and give it almost more attention on the, the cat itself. And your orb, that's the third one in on the top row, I just wish you'd had a little bit more sharpness on that because it's just slightly out of focus. The, the night fishing heron I thought worked very well indeed, but it's the bottom row where I think there's some very skilled um, still life work. Um, bottom left, where you've got the musical score with those three reflectors, uh, it's very cleverly done. And then moving two along to the skull, which um, I think just called still life, you've got some wonderful lighting in here always a difficult subject still life because you've got to be in total control of the light the placement of objects um, you can't blame anybody else if it goes wrong it's totally down to you but i think you've constructed this very well indeed i love the little bit of highlight on the dark greeny gray background and for me the inspired touch in this to give it an extra highlight was to have that red feathered quill in the middle of the picture space. It just gives a strong point of focus. Otherwise, I think your eye would have been wandering around it a bit. Very well put together, very well lit. Um, Bronwyn? There's a few, again, I could comment on. Um, I actually photographed ballet dancers for quite a long while, um, mostly in a concert setting. I didn't typically do one photography with um, uh, studio type work. The other, the one that I particularly want to focus on is actually the one in the top left, which is titled Waterfall at, uh, now I'm, I'm probably, I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce it, uh, but it's the waterfall in the top, the top left corner. Gorgeous landscape image with wonderful depth of feel and, uh, and a great three dimensional quality to it. The lighting is well controlled to retain the detail throughout the whites and the, the radiating pattern of water adds significantly to this image. It is a beautiful landscape image. Well done. And uh, Agatha? Yeah, a very attractive panel. And this is one of the complete variety of the panel that I've seen during the competition. I have a scenery, we have an animal and macro photo, portrait, sport photo, and also a still life. The one that I want to command is actually the third photo on the top row uh, is the sport photo. I'm really uh, uh, very uh, attracted by this photo because I can see the expression of the players. And I think the photographer have captured it at the great moment, at the right moment. And this is one of the best, uh, uh, I think one of the best uh, important elements when you are uh, doing a sport photos, it has to be at the right moment. And you can see that all the players is trying to fight and then uh, there is a story behind uh, this photo. You can see that, okay, you can feel that, okay, all the players is trying to fight to win. So this is one of the successful uh, sport photos. Uh, and the other things that I'm actually attracted is the red color and with the bunny. I, red is my favorite, uh, my favorite color. That's why I, everything, I was attracted by the red color. 
but it's very uh, interesting with the background with all the hands and then how the bunny uh, uh, is how the bunny is actually like abandoned bunny something like that but uh, it's a nice composition and that uh, it's a, something at a fresh idea and um, uh, it's a very good uh, photos it's just what kind of message you want to tell about these photos um, that the things that uh, when the photographer uh, uh, submitting or display a photo, you need to think what kind of message you want to uh, to 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 get. You want the audience to get. Okay, that's the things that probably you need to uh, to always remember. And but the overall is very nice panel. Good job. And Richard, another strong panel here with a lovely emphasis on nature. Some lovely captures there. Um, I thought the fox was wonderful and also capturing that moment with the heron down on the bottom left to get that fish and you do wonder how they managed to swallow them. I was watching them near where I live capturing flatfish, decent sized flatfish and swallowing them whole and you just don't, that will not go down that slim neck but it does. The one I'd like to concentrate on though is just that lovely little blue tit up in the top left hand corner because your composition there is so unlike a lot of dare I say bird on a stick pictures where they are frequently slap bang in the middle of the picture space. Having it offset here to the left hand side on what I think is one of those beautifully contorted hazel twigs I think was a very, very good touch indeed. Your depth of field is absolutely spot on. The sharpness in the blue tit's eyes works wonderfully. The only thing that I would possibly consider doing with it, you've captured beautiful springtime yellow greens in the background. And I did find that they were starting to um, almost dominate the yellows of the blue tit's breast feathers. And possibly if those yellows in the background, if you just select that yellow in the background and reduce its saturation a fraction, I think it would make the blue tit stand out a little bit more. But great composition, good skill and knowledge of your camera craft. Now back to uh, Bronwyn. Yes, uh, look, there's uh, again some great captures within this panel. Uh, the little squirrel up in the top left, right, the left top left corner, I uh, immediately attracted my eye when I saw it, and it's just a pity that we haven't got the full face in the reflection. If if only that had been there, it just would have nudged this bit, image a bit high, but it's, a, it's still a lovely capture. The one that I'm going to comment on in particular, though, is the one in the bottom left-hand corner, which is, the, is titled Colourpop. And some beautiful textures in this image and a combination of patterns um, throughout the timber um, with a contrast of the patterns of the, the, the actual shutters going across. The only thing that I, and the, even the colour combination, the, that bright hot pink item hanging on that line in that window, the thing that probably would have lifted that a little bit is, is if that garment had been a little bit more identifiable. Uh, or had even a touch of humour associated with it, you know, something lacy or uh, just some, something that adds that little bit of extra element to, to the, the visual impact that's already there. But other than that, well done. And Agatha? Yes, um, very lovely uh, panels and a very interesting one. Uh, especially the one that I want to command is actually the one that at the minute I saw this panel is attract me is <clears throat> the girl with the <clears throat> the girl with the ponytail uh, flying. Okay, this is the third uh, photos uh, on the first row. Um, this is one of my favorite photo, not only in this panel, but also uh, uh, with this in, during the competition. Uh, what a creative idea. And the things that actually become more powerful in this photo is actually the expression of the girl. Because when you 
take a picture of a children you of a child you want to take uh, you want to capture the pureness of the child and you can feel that this child expression is very natural you can feel that how naive is the girl so that is makes uh, these photos is uh, very successful and the other things i want to comment is actually on the bottom row uh, the third photo as well uh, it's a very interesting uh, setting. It's a very interesting. It's not a setting in the sense of setting. Probably this is a candid, but it's very nicely with two windows with two people. Um, uh, it's a nicely uh, captured at the right moment. Uh, overall, I think again, as I mentioned before, is a, a wide variety of uh, uh, panels and an interesting one. And good job to the club. And uh, Richard? Thank you. Yes, a couple of clever pictures in here. Down on the bottom row, third one in, looking straight down into the top of the coffee pot. I thought that was cleverly seen. Very good still life. Some real rich tones in that. Um, you almost do need the explanation through the title as to what the subject actually is. So I enjoyed exploring that one. But the one I kept coming back to is the one on the left-hand side of the coffee pot, appropriately called Abandoned Faith. And I do like the way you've discovered this. Um, I don't think you've put it together unless you're exceptionally clever at spinning spiders' webs, which do cover the top of that crucifix very nicely indeed. I think you've handled the lighting here extremely well balancing out the stronger light outside along the dimpled glass against the shadow on the inside to ensure that we've got adequate detail on the front of the crucifix. Also, your depth of field, I think, has worked very well indeed. We've got a gently out of focus background, uh, foreground rather, taking us through to the detail of the crucifix. Having it offset to the right hand side, I think, works extremely well. Very well seen and produced. And uh, we're now back to Bronwyn again. I was actually delighted to get this particular panel on my list to comment on because four of these images were amongst, in fact, five of these images were amongst my favourites in this competition. And I'm going to um, comment on two in particular, uh, but I, I have to say that I, I think that the landscape up in the top right is absolutely beautiful and the, that lady with her shopping bag travelling through on the, on the second, from the, second from the left up in the top row, travelling through with her shopping bag through a, a, water, a glass with um, water trickling down. We've actually got an art centre here in Melbourne that's got a water wall down the wall of glass. And we got a lot of images along these lines through that wall of glass. And this just immediately reminded me of that, but just delightful. But the, the two that I particularly want to comment on is uh, the one titled Mantis Roof, which uh, I think the title itself will tell you which one I'm talking about. It's the one in the top left. And it's just so cleverly seen to capture a piece of architecture and see an insect in that piece of architecture. The, the richness of the colour tones, you've got those complementary colours, those, those golden tones and the complementary blues. You've got that lighting which has come through at a beautiful time of day to actually give that beautiful uh, golden tone through, the, through the, the, that orange of the roof line. And then to see eyes, to see that piece of architecture as a set of eyes, it's just a masterstroke. It really is a terribly clever picture in the way you've, you've sought to capture it. The other one that I want to comment on is the one down in the bottom left corner, which is titled Clown. And this was also one of my absolute favourites. Um, it's, it's just got everything. It's got lighting, it's got animation, it's got atmosphere. You've even got this sort of smoke travelling through behind him. And that, that face, it's just a, it just exudes personality, that, that, that figure coming at you with that, that look in the eyes and the treatment that has been applied to the eyes to to give them that hint of red through the eyes. It's really beautifully, beautifully done. And, you know, the depth of field and the, the other technical aspects have just been nailed. Um, I can see, I can see three, three images, three, four images here easily that um, are, are international standard and I'd encourage you to enter them. 
Okay, we're just going to um, give Agatha a rest for the moment and we're going to move on to Richard. Thank you. Yes, again, as I've mentioned already throughout this competition, I've been astounded by the sheer variety of work that clubs have managed to put together. When you're looking here, we've got landscape, you've got close up, you've got some interesting interior architecture, and some very good nature too. But the one that I did enjoy and would like to comment on is up on the top right, uh, top row, right hand side, which is just out to pasture. And uh, I think in a field full of cows, uh, kneeling down, I presume, to take this picture is always a very dodgy thing to do where there's cows about. But getting your exposure right in this situation against a bright sky, you've got perfect lighting throughout the subject. Uh, great depth of field, so we're just losing some of the sharpness of the grasses in the foreground, but every bit of the cow is sharp. I just wish you'd managed a couple of inches more at the top of the picture because we're just clipping the top of one of the ears and missing the top of the head. If you'd managed to include that, I think it would have been a much stronger picture, but very well put together. And like so many pictures we're seeing in this competition, your understanding of what your camera can do is, is excellent. Right. Yeah. Roman. Very broad range again in this this set of images. The uh, the the cat on the top right hand corner has the most beautiful set of eyes, and that intensity of those eyes looking out through the window it really does make you want to just push the cat aside for a second, just see what it's looking at, and to want to engage with a picture like that is always an asset. Uh, the one that uh, was the standout image, though, in this set is, uh, for, for me, is the one on second from the left on the top row, the, uh, the sporting image of, um, again, another shot of hurling. And the, the moment that this has been captured at is just spot on, that ball just in the right spot of the image where you can actually physically see the ball against the, you know, against the, the person without being lost against anything in the background that might be a similar colour. That person about to, about to hit it with, I, I'm, I'm going to be ignorant here, I'm assuming it's called a bat, but uh, to, to actually hit it. And that other person who's coming in in the hope of actually capturing that ball from that person. It's just been caught at that peak of the moment, which is, is, is you know the perfect thing to to achieve in a in a successful sporting image. Well done. Sorry. And uh, uh, Agatha. Sorry. Yes, it's a very lovely panels, and again a mix of variety uh, with some of the animals, and also there is some human picture and also there's some landscape. The one that attract me most is actually the second photo on the top row, uh, where there are two birds. One is the big bird and the other one is the small bird. If you take a look at this photo, it looks like the, the big one is talking to the small one and you are kind of wandering around what are they talking about. So I think in taking a picture of the nature, uh, the, the, the animals is not an easy. You have to wait until the right moment. And uh, congratulate to the photographer that you capture at the right moment. It looks like they are talking to each other. I think that's the successful of the uh, nature photo is to take at the uh, at the best, at the best uh, moment. And the one that I want also to comment is actually the first photos, uh, the landscape with the, uh, with there is some, I think there is some halo of there is some uh, circle uh, halos. Uh, this is a very nice photos, landscape photos and uh, very soft lighting, uh, but you can see it's quite powerful and people, Attracted because the the most part is actually because of the nice uh, half uh, halos. That one is like like the half rainbows. Uh, uh, so this is a very successful landscape photo as well. So I guess uh, excellent job to all, all the photographers in this panel. And uh, Richard. 
Thank you. Some good sky astral photography here, that trail of the Milky Way up above the tower, very cleverly captured indeed. A lot of creativity and thought and concentration went into that. Um, the one that I would like specifically to comment on is also on the top row, second one in from the left hand side, which is just entitled The Stick Maker. And to me, portraiture, if it can give you an insight into an individual's character, I think it carries so much more weight to it. And I think this person's gentle, warm smile says so much about the individual. Um, you've got him there with his stick making craft, lovely little bit of light on his hands just to give attention down there. What I would think improved this a lot is if you could just introduce a little bit more light. And as we are looking at the character on the left hand side of his face, that's to say his right cheek, um, just to put a little bit more light in there. If it was possible to reset this one, I would have looked at having a little bit of a reflector off to the left to push that little bit of light in you're probably never going to be able to recompose this one again. So possibly you could easily do it in either Lightroom or Camera Raw using the adjustment brushes to put a little bit of light in there. If you're doing that, I would be inclined just behind him, there is a bit of a highlight on some material or stick. So I'd just tone that down a little bit so we've got nothing to pull away from his face or his hands. But lovely character, well caught. And uh, Bronwyn? I've got a couple of favourites again among this set of very, very good images, actually. Some, you know, the, the poppies are beautiful, the, the intensity on the, or the single poppy, I should say, second from the, the left on the top row is, is beautiful, um, as is the bird on the top left. Um, but the, the two that I particularly want to hone in on is the one titled, Do You Want a Sweet? Which is the one that's third from the left on the top row. Uh, such a delightful interaction between this child and this, this animal. Uh, and to just have that moment where these, these two clearly have an interest in one another is just such a, a lovely interaction. Um, it's a difficult lighting situation as well, and it's been well handled in that regard. Um, I could, if I had a wish list, it would have been that the head of the other child, uh, just the top of that jacket in the foreground, if, if there'd been any possibility of that head not being in this picture, it would just make this picture that much better. Uh, and I do in fact wonder whether it might be worthwhile uh, cropping the bottom of that image, much as um, you will you'll lose a, a little bit of the child's hood. Uh, the main part of the image is in fact the up around the face and the two faces and the hand of the child. And you can actually uh, lessen the impact of that hood if you just, just perhaps trim it uh, a little bit and make it a more panoramic image. The other one that I particularly want to comment on is the one in the bottom left corner, uh, which is titled Refraction. And such a, a gorgeous um, capture to, to capture the light refraction across across the disc. Uh, the the only thing that um, I, I would comment on is that whenever you've got writing in an image, um, writing does tend to draw your eye because people people naturally look to writing to read it. And much as we all know it's a disc and that the writing on that disc is probably very very boring information uh, it did I did wonder whether perhaps just cropping that off and, and leaving the abstract of the lighting with the bubbles that also refract the light whether that taking that little bit of the bright edge off mightn't actually make this image just a little bit stronger and if you were to do that you'd probably balance it with a little bit off the left as well but just just as a thought um, you know to experiment with that on the screen but still the the colors through that image are beautiful and the fact that you put those bubbles on to then add that extra dimension of, of that of the play of play of those colors uh, through the water droplets is, it was great well done thank you and uh, back to you actor <clears throat> yeah oh uh, very lovely panels and I think it's strong panel as well 
uh, there is two photos that I want to comment. Uh, uh, one is actually the third photos from the first row. The title is actually Water Under the Bridge. This photo is one of my favorite one because I can I can I can feel the emotion of these photos and I can take a look at the photos again and again and not getting bored at all. I can imagine that if I in the stressful day and I see this photo, then I feel so uh, my mood it will be uh, my mood it will be better again. Because I think it's a very nice, very soft lighting with the nice effect of a painting types of things. Um, this is a nice conversation and nice conversation in the sense of, okay, there is a, a, a bridge uh, and then you, you, you can feel that uh, sense of depth as well. And then you feel that, okay, you are, uh, you are uh, walking through this, uh, you are walking through this under the, I mean, the, the, the bridge as well. So <clears throat> it's very nice again, a nice composition as well and uh, very good uh, art photos, sexual art photos. And another one I want to comment, uh, I want to uh, comment, it's actually the portrait of a man. You can see the portrait of a man, it's a very nice, a strong expression. You can see that how sharp is the eyes and uh, how is actually the man is staring at you and the lighting also, good lighting and uh, uh, quite a dramatic in the sense of they can enhance the character of the man. So it's a successful portrait as well. Excellent and well done. No problem. And again, a very broad variety in this, in this set. Uh, I particularly like, uh, I would particularly commend the image in the top right hand corner of the flower. The fact that the, the flower petals overlap and because the light is coming down through the flower, you've actually got the shadow work of one, one petal across another has a particularly nice feel to it. And there's even just that hint of a spider web across between the various, uh, the various stems of the flowers that is just catching the light, just a hint of it. But the one I particularly want to talk about is the one in the bottom left-hand corner, which is titled Running In. And again, it's one of those examples of um, a minimalist uh, subject within a scene. Uh, you've got that beautiful, beautiful scene going across with the, the undulating sand that has captured that beautiful light that's come in at either early or late in the day, you'll get fairly similar light. Uh, but to have that three-dimensional aspect of it, creating that pattern of colour and light going through the sand and through the through to that, uh, that tiny, tiny little running figure. And you know that that figure has not been staged, that figure is actually running because the hair, if you look, and we're talking the tiniest detail here, the, apart from the fact that one leg is lifted and they're physically in the, the mode of running, the hair is streaming out behind that figure. And it's just such a really nice and really important touch. It's, um, it's lovely and I, I can't, I can't also go without mentioning the bottom right hand corner, that lovely atmospheric light that's there amongst the tree. Very, very, um, very, very nice capture with that, um, that mist capturing that light. Well done. And uh, I get it? Yeah. Uh, again, this is a very interesting and lovely uh, panels and mix of variety as well. Uh, you can see that some landscape, you can see some still life, and you can see also uh, a human uh, a street photos. So it's very nice uh, collection of these panels. The one that I want to talk about is actually the photo of the church. The one is there's a square, uh, it's cropped square in the first in the bottom, uh, the first uh, one in the bottom row. Uh, the one, uh, this has become more interesting because it's, it's show that how is actually you compare between the church with the houses. You can see there is some similarity on the top of the church with, with the top of the, the rooftop of the houses as well. So it's a very nice composition and uh, it crop really effectively. You make it crop uh, uh, in square. 
So it's a very nice and then also it's unusual angle in the sense of you have to be a little bit high angle to take this kind of picture. Uh, so uh, I think if there is any uh, improvement or not uh, or make it more dramatic to these photos is probably the lighting. I know this is difficult, especially when you're traveling to one uh, in one place and you're probably not coming back to that place is uh, if you wait a little bit like probably sunrise or probably during the sunset, I think the photos become more dramatic because uh, the, the, it, it, will, it will be illuminated by the lightings, a very nice lighting and become the photos more powerful. And it's excellent photos. And uh, Richard. Yes, I couldn't help but notice how blue appears so well in some of these pictures. Um, blue water droplets, just lovely to get that central, um, stronger shape in the water drops. Um, and that aerial view looking down on the coast, it was quite a visual feat, that one, to try and interpret exactly what it was. That's down in the bottom row on the left-hand side. Next to it, I think, is a very delicate shot, just of the little hover fly on the flower head, with a minimal depth of field, which has created a very artistic painterly effect to the overall picture. But the one that I do want to comment on a little bit more is on the top row on the right hand side, where I think it's called uh, in full flight. And you can see it is there because that both feet are clear of the ground. There is tremendous action there, but you've managed to capture it in perfect sharp detail and some lovely light as well. So very, very good bit of sports photography there. The one thing which I think could improve it significantly is that if you can do a little bit of work on the background, certainly reduce the contrast, take down the saturation considerably, and just darken it down so that the bright colours which are in there do not detract from the player. That if those colours, the saturation, the sharpness are held back, I think you will find that the player stands out significantly more but overall a fascinating and enjoyable panel. Thank you. Um, well, firstly, thank you for inviting me to, to be one of your judges. Um, this uh, competition, as I mentioned, was uh, introduced to me as one that was for non-advanced photographers and it just absolutely isn't. <laughs> the standard in this is very easily what I would expect to see in national competition and indeed at the, at the better end of the images, there's no question that many of them are international standard and worthy of awards internationals in a number of instances. I would absolutely encourage people who have um, done well in this competition to, to look to entering those bigger competitions because those it's challenging yourself that helps you raise that bar. It's very easy when you're at the, the top of a club or or even a top of a, a, any sort of competition to sort of plateau there. And until you take that next step and, and push yourself into that next level of competition, you, you're not advancing yourself more in terms of your standard because you suddenly realise, I can make this that much better. And you, you get exposed to a lot more images as well in these higher level competitions. But the standard, the standard in this competition is, is outstanding. And uh, yeah, I congratulate the makers and indeed the clubs who have no doubt had a lot of input into helping these makers develop their skills. Well done. Okay, thank you very much, Bron Bronwyn. Uh, Agatha, would you like to say a few words? Yes, uh, first of all, I would like to thank you as well for the invitation. It is uh, it's an honor for me to be one of the judges of this competition. I think the same comment with uh, Brown, uh, Brown that uh, at the first time uh, in the email is stated that this is non-advanced photographer, but I don't see that when I uh, uh, look at and review one of the one by one, the panels, it seems to be like uh, 
most of the people actually already have an artistic sense and a lot of photos with a good composition and a, a lot of photos is actually with the high standard of uh, uh, technique, especially the portrait photo with a good lighting. And again, this photo is actually very, um, uh, very suitable. I mean, like uh, uh, you, if you join the of, of uh, international photo competition and I'm very happy to see also the, the winners because uh, these winners is not only I think for the local competition but I guess if you uh, the winners join uh, the international salon they can also become uh, one of the winner of the uh, uh, international salon uh, around the world so I would like to congratulate to all the winners and also I would like to congratulate to all the participants because again, uh, I really enjoy looking at the photos even one by one. Uh, every time I every time I judge, it's actually I'm also a process of learning because there are a lot of good photos. I also learn from you uh, uh, because uh, photo is actually photography is actually limitless. I mean, like there is no boundaries, and there are a lot of I mean, like uh, you can take a lot of variety of photos. Uh, 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 <clears throat> Uh, in in everywhere. So I also thank you for the opportunity of uh, uh, having uh, opportunity to judge one of your photos. Uh, and uh, I really enjoy uh, looking at the panels and looking at the photos one by one. Thank you. Thank you, Agatha. Uh, Richard, would you like to say a few words? I certainly would. Um, I think today we're all agreed that this has been a remarkably high standard. Um, it's just so reassuring to know that the standard of photography of clubs in the Irish Photographic Federation is so high. And I will echo the encouragement there, please put these pictures out to a wider audience. They deserve to be seen. And like Agatha, I feel very honored to have been invited to this because I have learned a lot. There's been some amazingly inspirational pictures and here some great techniques against every range of photogra photographic style that we know. But I must thank all the organizers without whom this amazing event wouldn't take place. Zoom has got so much to be thanked really because to do this with a judge from England one from Australia, one from Malaysia, run by Southern Ireland, is just unimaginable otherwise, and it's worked faultlessly. So firstly, my thanks go to Andrew for running this as the coordinator so well. Sabrina, Derville, Fiona, thank you for all your background work on this, pulling it together so well, making sure we were fully informed of what we needed to do. And I am totally relying on Ned to make this sound reasonably accessible to all the audiences that will, will hear it. So thank you very much. Uh, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. And I hope all the clubs watching this get as much pleasure from it as we did. Thank you. Now I'd just like to say thank you to the judges. Thank you for taking the time to judge the Irish Photographic Federation National Shield Digital 2020 competition. Your knowledge of photography and the in-depth feedback you gave throughout the viewing of the panels this morning, uh, Sunday the 15th, will be inspiring to all the clubs, and especially to the individuals, photographers. I have nothing but praise for your professionalism throughout. If anything, come, if anything good comes out of COVID-19 is the opportunity to get judges of international quality. Uh, Zoom has opened up new doors to all clubs and societies. To uh, hand over to the President of the Irish Photographic Federation, Don Redding. Thanks, Andy, and thanks everyone for participating in the 2020 National Shield, albeit being a, a different event this year, but having said that, a successful event. Um, in 2019, we held this event uh, physically uh, down in Kilkenny, a very, very well-run event with over two or 300 people over the course of the two days, participating and coming along to see the, the, the event. And I want to thank Andy for that. And I also want to thank Andy for his initiative to take the thought of putting an actual visual 
uh, National Shield online, which uh, he took to council uh, with the idea. Um, it's the first time we've ever had to do it, but I want to acknowledge what he did in preparing for it uh, and, and, and seeing it through. I want to thank the people uh, who he assisted him, uh, the team of people he had from both Kilkenny and Carlo Photographic Societies, who assisted him over the couple of days and the preparations coming up to it. Um, any event can't be held without a sponsor, so I want to thank Sheldon Fine Art Papers for their sponsorship. And any event can't be held without the coordination of judges to judge photographs and the panels. We had three international judges. We haven't done that in a long time. Uh, and the three judges was Bronwyn Casey from Australia, Agata Banuta from Indonesia, and Richard Spears from England. Um, we had, as I said, 26 clubs participating last year, a fabulous event, uh, co-hosted and coordinated by Andy. This year, I'm glad to say, and it's a great achievement, uh, that we had 29 clubs participating. Whether clubs found that easier to participate during the pandemic, uh, where they happened to physically travel to an event might have had some impact on it but still it's a it's no mean achievement it's a great achievement for the photographic federation we're delighted with the success of it and we're delighted with the judges and we're delighted with the work the judges did and we're delighted with the contribution that the clubs continue to make uh, for, uh, for photography in ireland sandy well done a great job done uh, congratulations to all the clubs who participated and well done to all those who were involved thanks very much Uh, just uh, moving on. Okay, just again, I'd just like to thank uh, Sheldon for our doing our sponsors today. I hope you enjoyed the video and please remember the discount code that can be used up to uh, from 30 days from today. And again, our special thanks to our judges, Bronwyn, Agatha and Richard. I think uh, you'll all agree that they did a fantastic job. Now, the most most improved club. Um, I'm not quite sure when this was actually introduced, but I think it's a great idea. And um, the most improved club this year goes to Athlone Photographic Society Club, Photography Club, Athlone Photography Club. Well done to Athlone. Now we'll um, we'll move on to the individual awards. Um, individual awards this year, uh, we have um, honorable mentions, bronze, silver and gold. And our first honorable mention goes to Lucas. Now, I apologies, Lucas, it's I think it's, P P sorry, okay, Pioski, sorry, my apologies. <laughs> Never get that right. Um, again, congratulations uh, to Lucas. Um, well done. Our second honorable mention goes to St. Bridges Photography Group, Wasp Christy Brown. Well done. Excellent. Very well done. I think it's a beautiful image and I think uh, you, you, you heard what uh, I think it was Ag Agatha actually uh, commented on it. Well done. Okay, our next is the bronze medal. And we congratulate uh, Mary Town and Burn at uh, Harlow Photograph Society. Well done. Excellent. Beautiful shot. Moving on to silver. And I would like to con congratulate. Oops, sorry, sorry. I'd like to congratulate Stephen Sinclair of uh, Catchlight Camera Club. Well done. Told you this was nerve wracking. Told you should have taken me tablets. Anyway, <laughs> um, I think you just got a glimpse of the gold medal there by mistake, but I'd like to pass on a sincere thanks to Yvonne Crawley of Strata Photographic Club. Well done, uh, gold medal. Congratulations. Okay, now it gets exciting. We move on then to the individual color awards. And the individual color awards, we have uh, honorable mention, bronze medals, uh, silver medal, and gold medal. 
first and only honorable mention goes to Paddy Ahern, Clomel Camera Club. Well done. We move on then to, we have in this section, we've got two bronze medals. And the first bronze medal goes to John O'Halloran, Glarney Photographic Club. Beautiful shot. Well done. Well done, John. And our second bronze medal goes to Ger O'Halloran, Glarney Photographic Club. Beautiful, moody shot. Absolutely gorgeous. Well done, uh, Ger. Now, moving on then to our silver medal. And the silver medal goes to Barry Dillon, Offshoot Photograph Society. Absolutely lovely shot. I, I remember being over in Valencia myself and I took a shot, something similar. I might borrow uh, Barry's shot uh, when I'm putting it into competitions. It'd be nice, actually, you know, I think it's nicer than my ones. But anyway, um, moving on, and we have the gold medal in this section. And uh, congratulations to Again, draw the photographic club, Yvonne Crawley. Well done again, beautiful shot. Now, we move on to the club panel award in monochrome. And going from third to first place in the third section, in the third place, we have Drogheda. Well done, Drogheda, in third place. We have moving on then to second place. We have Blarney Photographic Club. And in First place, we have Catchlight Camera Club. Well done to all the winners. Now, moving on to the color awards in the panels. Uh, in third place, we go to Clomel. Camera Club, third place. And in second place, in the color section, panels, Offshoot Photograph Photography Society. Well done. And we now come to first place and we have Blarney Photography Club in first place. Okay. Moving on to the overall winners. And in third place, um, overall panel, uh, they will receive uh, a glass trophy. Um, we have a voucher from Sheldon Long. And in third place is Offshoot Photography Society. So you can see the two panels there, uh, the mono and, and the color. Well done to Offshoot. Hope you're all getting very excited now at the present time. We're coming now to the second place. And second place, place we have Catchlight Camera Club. And again, they will receive 
uh, a glass trophy and they will receive the voucher from Sheldon. Now, he's all sitting there waiting for the winner of the National Shield Digital 2020 goes to, anybody have a drum roll there? We have Blarney Photographic Club. Well done. Yeah. Well done. Congratulations. Wow. Well, well done, please. Well done, everybody. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Fantastic. Well done. Well done, everyone. 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 Well done, uh, no, I'm shocked. I, I think our chairman, Paul Reedy, is, is on the call. Paul, are like, you there? Uh, I, I, I'll give a drum roll for Paul Reedy. <laughs> He's still there. I'm still here, though. Yeah, that's... He wins, everyone. Paul Reedy is... Yeah. Well, I think it's um, very well done, um, Rory. And um, look, thank you all to the participating clubs. I... Um, I'm still in shock that I got through this without a hitch. It's well done, Andy. Very well done. Well done, done Andy. Yeah. Well done, Andy. Well done, Andy. Well done. Andy, Andy, can I get a recount? Andy, I, I won this by a mile. <laughs> we, want you to, we only want you to count the legal votes. Mm -hmm. the legal votes. <laughs> Go to the court. Blarney, Blarney, hand it over. <laughs> Very well done. <laughs> well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. I think I, I think it's, this has been a, a challenge. It's been a an experience. I suppose it's been everything. Um, I don't think I think I'm going to actually turn off my computer now for the next six months, so I don't have to see anybody, talk to anybody, do nothing. <laughs> <laughs>